in calculus, we ordinarily do examples involving position, velocity, and acceleration. Let's recall the sort of examples we do. Example. A crossbow bolt is shot straight upwards from the ground with initial velocity 49 meters per second. Recall that acceleration under Earth's gravity is g equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Find the velocity and height functions, neglect air resistance. And we can solve a problem like this simply using integration. This is based on two differential equations, although, of course, it's not framed that way in calculus. The derivative of the position function is the velocity function. The derivative of the velocity function is acceleration. And if we did this problem, we would do it as follows. The velocity is the antiderivative of negative 9.8. We wouldn't write meters per second squared. The gravitational constant is positive, but acceleration is negative. I suppose the way I framed this is slightly deceptive. So V equals negative 9.8 T plus the initial velocity, the constant of integration, and the initial velocity is four, 49, negative 9.8 t plus 49. The position is the acceleration of the velocity. I, the position is the antiderivative of the velocity. I feel like I said something weird there. Negative 4.9 t squared plus 49t plus the initial height. And we are assuming this is launched from ground level. That is the initial height is zero. Very well. Let's consider in a little more depth the idea that in this situation, acceleration is just negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Where this ultimately comes from is Newton's second law, force equal 
equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So force equals mass times the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. If we're neglecting air resistance, the only force is the gravitational force. The force is the negative mass of the object times the gravitational force. And we then have negative mg equals m dv dt. Cancel our m's. Negative G equals DV DT. And the velocity then is the indefinite integral of negative G DT under Earth's gravity, that's about negative 9.8, exactly what we have up here. What if we don't neglect air resistance? Then this force term will no longer be negative mg. It will contain some kind of force due to air resistance. In the next video, we'll, and the next set of notes, we'll add air resistance to this situation.